Hi, this is Myra with Boutique Paint. Today I'm going to be working on an artboard, art piece, um, using the new Village Market. And I'm going to also be using um, the vintage texture, the uh, Crackle stamp, and the uh, Trimmings 3. So the first thing I did is I grabbed one of the gallery blanks, and this is a 5x7. And I'm going to stamp the crackle. And I'm going to use the stone gray. And I like using the stone gray more than the black, especially if you're just kind of doing background stuff. It's a little softer. Um, it's less, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The only word that's coming to mind is abrupt, and that's not the right word. It's it's less stark, um, and hopefully this will stamp okay because it looks a little looks like that stamp needs to be reinked. So I'm going to start a little bit above. And you don't always have to push everywhere. You can just kind of you know do outlines, or you can do it through the whole thing since we are going to be building up in the middle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And you can see I there's a little bit missing there. That's okay. So let's get the bottom. Perfect. All right, let's get that put away. And I chose to do this um, top run of the trim. And I'll show you what I did, but I want to show you real quick. You can see that I've got some little cracks going in here. I did that on purpose. So I'll show you how I did that. And some of you may not want that. In which case, the best way to do that is to... Make sure you push really hard once you get your clay in there um, and try to do it in one one thing of clay, uh, meaning um, one glob. I get some clay out and show you. First, I'm going to take a little cornstarch because it makes it so much easier to release. You don't have to, but it does make it easier. So this, um, I'm only going to need three of these. And on this mold, this is designed to um, butt up against each other if you're doing a run. So this ends, and then you can start it at this end again. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the curve, however. If you want it to be straight, then you could start it here and do it straight across. But I am going to do it here, and then I'm going to cut it a little bit. So if you want it to be basically perfect, roll it out like that. That's and check your side. See that side's got some crackling. That is going to show up when you push it in. Even if you push it really in there tight, it might still show up. But you can see that side is hardly any crackling. So you can put it in like that. Now I do want the little bit of inconsistency. So I'm gonna do this kind of in, in um, some pieces. Or I could just put it in like that and see what we come up with. I'm kind of wanting it to look a little bit on the old side, a little bit on the funky side. So that's why I want the cracks. And obviously you can do that with any one of the molds. You know, you can give it the text, the extra texture. And also, um, because we're gluing up wet, sometimes that will automatically, you know, because you do get maybe some uh, cracking as you go once it starts drying. Um, it depends a lot of times on how big of a piece the mold is. I'll just put a little bit in there. All right. Huh. That's pretty funny. I didn't get as much cracking on this one as I did on the other one. 
see you just never know but that's okay but I'm going to put that one aside and I'm going to use the one that I did get a little bit more cracking. So it, I think I just pushed it, pushed in a little too hard on that one. So I'm going to take a knife and just go and cut this little part off here. Because I'm not wanting that because I want it to match this side. And then we'll put that there before we glue it up. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the pig today. And I'm also going to do these little guys, these little wheat. Let's see, my brush. Now I found with the pig, because it is so big, or any of these, because they're larger, um, if your clay's a little dried out, it's a little harder to manipulate. Um, so I started with a uh, fresh pack of the air dry clay. And because it is big and you're kind of pushing, it wants to kind of, one end wants to go out while the other one goes in. Um, so just kind of, you can hold with one finger as you're pushing it in until you get it established. And the tail is a little finicky, I'm not going to lie. Just be super gentle when you go to pull it out of the mold. And because this is big, I'm just going to do it with my fingers as opposed to getting out one of the scrapers and using it. Um, I'm just afraid that as I pull it, it'll try to pull up one side of the, of the little guy. Now on the tail, just really get the clay in there so that, and when you're doing the uh, cornstarch, get Get a good amount in there too so that it will release nicely for you. All right, now, okay, now as you go to remove this little guy, the tail is really the hardest part. Um, and I suggest when you're putting the um, cornstarch in, give a little extra love there, a little extra cornstarch, and just I'm going to start here and just kind of gently help work it out. And then the rest will follow. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. All right. We'll set him there. And then we're going to do the wheat. I think this is one of my favorite molds that they've ever done. I mean, I, you know, they've done so many great ones, but this one's just fun. Get some in there. And you can see there's a little bit of, those are tiny down there. Get a good amount in there too. Alrighty, there we go. And be careful not to squish these. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint these up.
while they're still wet and before I put them on the board. That way you're not trying to get in between and, and uh, messing up your, your stamp there. So I painted and then I let it dry for the most part, the paint. Um, the clay part is still wet and it'll take probably a good 24 hours to set up. But I did my layout and now I'm going to get some glue on this little guy. Make sure you get the legs really good. And their little tail so it doesn't want to pop off on you. Move it there in the middle. Got a little bit too much there on the ear, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Same with the legs. Okay. Wipe the glue off my finger so I don't get it everywhere. And you might have noticed that I did not get paint everywhere. Um, and I'm okay with that. There's some white showing through here and here. And um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do yet as far as coloring. Um, but it kind of gives it a little bit more depth in my opinion. Now, when I did one of these boards and I did the dragonflies and the butterfly, um, I added a little bit of color um, in the corners. And you could do that either with some watercolors or um, the inks. I used the inks, the IOD inks, and it worked really well. You don't want just regular paint um, because you want it kind of see-through. Oops, my, my legs wanted to come up. I need to keep that little guy's leg down. I'm going to scoot that a little bit. And from here, this is just, you know, kind of the, the base place to start. You could add color. You could, um, do the antiquing. Boop. Trying to get this centered. My eyeballs are off today. When you're painting, also just as a side note, um, when the clay is still wet, be very gentle because you don't want to be losing the detail in your pieces. So you don't want to be pushing down really hard because you will possibly lose the detail. So under normal circumstances, um, to add any powders, I would wax it first with clear wax and then put the powders on it so it'd have something to grab onto. Um, but that being said, I think when I'm done with this, I want to spray it kind of a gloss uh, top coat on it. So, but I'm not sure yet. I may still go with the matte. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm kind of thinking there is still some wet on here, so I'm hoping it's enough to kind of grab onto. Um, if not, then 
and we'll come up with plan B. So I'm using the dark and decrepit dust and I'm just going to, this is all dry, so I know it's not going to probably stick to that real well. Well, maybe it is. So I'm just going to work some of this into the edges. And then I've got kind of this rust color powder. Um, it was when DIY was, uh, they experiment, you know, with new products and stuff like that. And this was one of their, uh, I don't know if it's a reject or her. Um, they sent it, sent some products to the stockists. Now you could also go ahead and stamp the edge of this with the crackle. That would be kind of fun. Um, but don't forget about the sides because sometimes they need a little love too. I'm going to put a little bit on this on this guy. But I like this color because it's kind of, you know, got gives it that rust effect. I know there's a lot of different um, metal effects uh, products out there. And hopefully DIY. Did I say DIY reject or did I say IOD? See, that's what happens when you carry two, two lines with initials. I get confused. Um, It'd be nice if they would come out with this because this is an awesome, awesome color. Now this little guy doesn't have um, quite as much detail as like the sheep um, that's got the, I mean, it's got a little bit, but I think because I painted it already when it was wet, you, I lost this detail where the sheep's got some nice detail. The cow, same thing. It's a little bit lighter. So there's not really any right or wrong way to do this other than just have a good time with it. You can see I'm making a mess. If it doesn't stick, you can always take a little bit of paint again, put it on there. Now this will goober up my brush, but, or you can kind of maybe do it this way. Nope, it doesn't want to come off. I'll just use it and goober the brush and start with a new one. Ooh, that's kind of cool though. It doesn't have to be exact on both sides. Just play with it, have fun. Okay, now I'm going to grab a different brush and use some of this little, a little bit of this rust in here. It's coming across a little bit on the orange side. A little less rusty. Um, but we can fix that. Now, if you had done it with the wax, you could very gently uh, rub some of this off, or you could put a little bit more wax onto your brush and pull it off that way. Um, but since I didn't do it that way, what I'm going to do is, because this is a little bit more orange than I wanted it, I'm just going to contaminate my brush <laughs> my, or my powder. Don't use the same brush. Don't do what I did. just did. Don't contaminate. I'm just going to go over it a little bit more with the dark and decrepit 
tone down the orange a little bit. You could actually, you know, mix the colors too. And that would probably would have been a, a good way to go. And that's a little bit closer to what I was wanting there. Like I said, just kind of go with it. Um, if you feel like you've gone too far, you can wipe it down a little bit. But I think you'll be okay. Let's get the sides a little bit. because I'm liking. You can just move it around too. Manipulate it that way. Just kind of rub it in a little bit. And if you let the whole thing dry, you could probably go back it also if you don't think that, or if you think you've gotten too much on here, you can go back and, and wipe it back a little bit once it's dry. Like I said, we're trying not to um, lose any of the detail of the molds. So let's, I wanna go ahead and do a little bit of crackle on the side. Um, I'm just going to stamp down the center of this guy and then I'm going to just roll it a little bit there we go and you think well you don't need to do the sides but when you have that much space on the side you might as well give it a little detail and people sometimes, you know, depending on how close you have your pieces together. Or if you just have this, you know, setting on a table. There we go. One more. Perfect. Now I am going to add a little bit more of the dark and decrepit. I love the dust because I feel like I have more control. Um, you could use the any of the waxes. You could do this with a white wax. You could do it um, with a darker color and then do white wax and that would be very pretty too. Um, or the white decrepit dust. Um, I just feel like I have more control when I'm using this than anything else. But use what you like. You know, if you're used to the wax and you like using the wax, or if that's what you have, then by all means, you could use the wax. So our little guy's done. Um, the only note that I think I would add to this is, um, since this piece is such a big piece, um, and you don't want him curling up while he's drying, you could take a piece of paper um, and then put like a light book on him. Just, uh, oops, you know, just something light just to kind of hold him down. Or the other thing you could do is you could put a piece of paper down and just flip him over and just let him rest like that. The paper will help absorb the water. Um, if you're doing it on a nice piece of, um, uh, wood like your dining room table or something like that um <clears throat> maybe put a piece of plastic down and then the paper so that the moisture doesn't draw all the way through anyway he's pretty darn cute thank you so much for joining me and if you have any questions you can go to our website at www.boutiquepaint.com <laughs>